Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Much can be learned from this past weekend's protests by pro-lifers at Planned Parenthood facilities around the country. One major point that was extremely evident in this is the pro-life cause is severely hampered because it tries to find common ground among varying religions which may agree on the narrow issue of preventing a child from being killed in the womb, but after that, it's pretty much a free-for-all. Case in point, Cass Avenue in downtown Detroit this past weekend. A large number of mostly Catholics showed up to pray and protest in front of the Planned Parenthood abortion chamber. Now, it's not a real secret that the pro-life movement has been largely a Catholic movement, organized by Catholics, developed by Catholics, attended by Catholics. That's only natural if you're Catholic because the church's teachings are so blindingly clear on this issue that any Catholic worth his weight would automatically react with repugnance at the idea of child murder and would feel the need to try and right this horrible wrong. That some Protestants would also feel the desire to join in is a grace. But as many Catholics know who patrol the prayer lines at abortion chambers, it's not uncommon to have a Protestant come out and start lecturing Catholics praying the rosary that we should not be praying to Mary, which of course we aren't, not in the way they think. This exact scene happened again in Detroit this past Saturday. That bullhorn amplified voice you hear in the background was a Protestant guy, not yelling at Planned Parenthood, but yelling at Catholics, telling us how we don't, one, understand the scriptures, two, don't know the good news, three, we follow a man in the Pope, not Jesus, and on and on and on. Same old droll of never-ending Protestant invective against the one true faith. Of course, it didn't take long for some Catholics to begin to answer his heresy back, and what started out as a protest against the demonic broke down into an internecine argument over dogma and doctrine. This is why a nation cannot have more than one religion in it and still hope to survive. Because when competing religions each assert their teachings, the resulting confusion allows for evil to simply advance. What needs to happen is an argument over which religion and resulting morality is actually correct. It's a little rich for a Protestant to show up at a pro-life effort and start lecturing Catholics about religion. It was, after all, the Protestant religion which spawned abortion owing to its unquestioning acceptance of contraception. Abortion is here because of contraception. Even the United States Supreme Court admits that fact publicly. In its abortion-affirming ruling of Casey v. Planned Parenthood in 1992, the majority opinion of the court said, quote, For two decades of economic and social developments, People have organized intimate relationships and made choices that define their views of themselves and their places in society in reliance on the availability of abortion in the event that contraception should fail." Close quote. Unwilling to cast aside the desire for consequence-free sex, the court affirmed the Protestant notion that if you want to use birth control, you should be allowed to because there is nothing evil about it. Heck, the idea that contraception is okay was brought into the Christian world for the first time in 2,000 years in 1930 by the Anglicans, and it's been a race to the bottom since then. This morality springs directly, flows directly out of the heretical Protestant religion. This is why there can be no coexistence between the Protestant heresy and Catholic truth. They are in competition, and since Catholicism is the one true faith established directly by the Son of God, that leaves Protestantism in the unenviable and dangerous position of having no real grounding. There needs to be a face-off, a fight to the death in the Christian world between this pervasive heresy that has brought about all this evil and the Bride of Christ. Catholics, including many in the pro-life movement, have been too willing to simply lay aside, meaning ignore, the differences between Catholicism and the Protestant heresy. Truth and heresy can never coexist, not for any significant time, without a nation being destroyed. While this argument was going on in front of the child-killing chamber, women were going in to kill their children. 
A nation cannot have competing moralities because sooner or later they clash. There can only be one objective morality and only one true religion. And that objective morality is not preached by a heretic community that didn't even exist for the first 1,500 years of Christianity. In order to secure a complete victory, you must cut off the head. The head of all this evil is the heresy of Protestantism. A nation needs just one religion, and it must be the only true religion. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Their experienced team of professional agents is ready to help you in every step of your journey, whether you are buying, selling, or both, and anywhere in the world. On top of that, what makes Real Estate for Life so great is that with every property bought or sold through one of their agents, an average of $1,000 and sometimes much more is donated to support the culture of life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes at the same time. Don't wait any longer. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more.